So we're going to do standardised treatment today for facial treatment. We've prepared our client with the headband and bedroll all the top towel just to protect it from getting any massage cream on it or anything like that. Our trolley's prepared and we've carried out our health and safety and hygiene preparation for our area and ourselves as well as our client. Okay. Consultation's been done, so the first thing we're going to do now is the eye cleanse. With the eye cleanse, you're going to take a cotton pad, dampen it in your water, and peel it in half to create two thin cotton pads. Pop it in your bedroll, make sure you're only using your area and your bedroll because these are all um, disposables and we've not sanitized, we can't sanitise the towels apart from putting them on a hot wash so you need to make sure you're working on your area and you're staying on your area. The two pads that you've now got, you're going to fold them in half to create two half moon shapes and then they're going to be placed underneath each eye so we can ask your clients to look up. Thank you. And they're going to be placed underneath the bottom lashes and this next one. And close your eyes, please. So you might need to position them so they're definitely underneath the eyelashes. So this is how we're going to remove the mascara and any eye makeup. Okay? So now with a dry cotton pad, you're going to take your eye makeup remover. If it's an oil and aqua one, you need to make sure you shake it. So you integrate both parts of the product and be generous with this because it's the product that removes the makeup it's not the rubbing of the eyes or anything like that it's a product that absorbs um, that sort of absorbs the mascara and then um, breaks it down you're going to place that gently over the lashes on the pad and you're going to repeat the same again For a minute while we do the lip cleanse. So you're still going to use your eye makeup remover to do your lip cleanse. Apply it to a cotton pad and remember when you finish with your products to always replace your lids for hygiene purposes to prevent cross contamination. And you've got a dry pad. So with the dry pad you're going to hold it at one side of your mouth and you're going to go across with the product and then the other side and then across the bottom lip with the product. in a bit and then dampen your pad and now you're going to remove off the actual eye makeup of the lips and make it remove off. So that's our lip cleanse. Our eye cleanse now, I'm going to take off that top bit and as you can see you'll probably end up with a little bit of mascara on the pad. Make sure with the pad that you keep it between your middle finger so it looks like that. You're going to support the eye area to the side and you're going to have a rolling action. You're going to sweep down the lashes to deposit that mascara onto the half moon shape of the pad. So we're not rubbing the skin on the eye, we're just literally stroking down the lashes with the specialised product which is eye makeup only. Client that's got waterproof mascara on, you can do exactly the same thing with baby oil. Because some men have really struggled to have waterproof mascara. Okay. Same action on the right. Okay. Now back to the first eye. 
the original part, you're going to do a sweep around the eyes, follow the muscle, and you're going to start from the outer corner to the inner corner and round. So we're taking off the full eye makeup. So outer corner, sweep, make sure you get underneath those lashes, round under the eyebrow and over the eyebrow. So if the client's got any products on the eyebrow, powder or pencil, we're taking that off at the same time. But always from the outer corner to the inner corner to follow the shape of the mushroom. When you've done that, that goes into the bit. You then select another cotton pad, wet it from your bowl, and you're now going to be taking off the actual specialised product. So the eye makeup removers took away the eye makeup, and now this damp cotton pad is taking away any residue left from the eye makeup remover. I'll sweep underneath the eyes, in the corner. But still follow the shape that one so if we go from the inside out we're dragging the skin and that's going to encourage lines so that's why we always go from the outside in. dispose of your tissue of your cotton pad and then repeat the same action with your bra Makeup. We've done our lip cleanse and we're now ready to do our superficial cleanse. So your superficial cleanse is just to remove surface makeup and any airborne pollution, dirt or grime that might be on the client's skin from the um, outside environment. Again, we don't know what the skin type of the client is, so at this point we're going to be using a sensitive cleanser so that we can remove any surface makeup before we do our um, Analysis. So we put the cleanser into your hand, rub it together to warm the product. So you down, start from the chin and distribute the product all over the client's skin. So you start off with effluage and then you'll just use some petrissage movements to try and free that makeup from the skin, especially if the client's got a heavy foundation on. You really want to get that product out of the skin. And nails should be short and enamel free for facials, not long nail extensions like I've got. So apologies for that. You're going to wipe on your towel. You then want to use your sponges to remove your cleanser. So your sponges should be sanitised with surgical spirit before they went in the water bowl. And again, you're going to hold them in your hands like that, exactly the same way as we did with our cotton wool. So it just makes it easy to handle. So we come to the chin because a lot of people wear the foundation a bit lower so they don't end up with lines. So we're just getting the skin underneath the eyes now. Still support the eye area. Um, 
Sponges back in the ball, right hands, and we're now ready to tone the skin. We tone the skin because it helps remove any residue from the cleanser. But if somebody's got a problem skin, like an oily skin, we've got an overactive sebaceous gland, you can get toners which have a strong astringent in them, and that will actually help to dry out any of the excess oil that's being produced onto the skin. But these are all sensitive products at the minute because we don't know what skin type our client is. So you can pat that or just gently wipe it across the face. Just to pick up any remains of the cleanser that may be on. Pop it in the bin. Next step now is we're going to block the skin. So we're going to dry it off. So you're going to get a tissue. Check with the client that they're not claustrophobic. No. No. And you're going to make a little hole for the nose in the tissue so that they can breathe. That then goes over the skin and you just gently just patting and stroking the skin just to dry off any excess moisture or liquid. Okay so that's our skin clean now, free from makeup, pollution, anything like that. So our next step will be actually performing skin analysis because we need to check what skin type our client is so skin types when we're looking for is dry combination oily skin conditions we can look for is mature sensitive dehydrated a mature skin will have more lines than your non-mature skin so if we say i think mature is 31 plus i think it's counted as in the book um, sensitive skin will show areas of redness for sensitivity and dehydrated skin will show areas of fine lines um, and maybe dry patches. You can have a dehydrated oily skin type. So you're dehydrated, you're mature and you're sensitive are your skin conditions. Oily, dry, normal combination are your skin types. We're going to cover our client's eyes before we put the lamp over because it's quite strong. And then we're going to have a look through the mag lamp for skin characteristics. So right now, I'm checking for any pustules, papules or comedones. If there's any present, I'm checking if they're just in the T-zone area of the skin or if they're on the cheeks as well. So I can see some slight comedones here that just fall within the T-zone. Even though it's at the side of the nose, it's still within that T-zone section. The texture, texture of the skin on the cheeks feels different to that in the T-zone area. We've got a bit of a shine down the centre and some open pores as well. So with that knowledge, we're going to say that our client today is a combination skin. Because we've got all the characteristics of an oily skin across the T-zone. And we've got characteristics of a normal skin type around the cheek area, a bit of sensitivity on the cheeks as well. Okay, so now I'm going to change my products to those for combination skin. So I'm going to get rid of all the sensitive products. So we've got cleanser, moisturiser, toner, exfoliator, we've got face mask, which I'm going to swap 
position on my trailer and then put my pads to the bottom. Put my face mask on the top. Specialised products which we use as an eye product. And our mask brush. do our deep cleanse with the correct products to match that skin type. So we've got our cleanser for combination skin and again you're going to do it the same way, rub it in your hands so it rounds the product and distribute that all over the skin. When it's distributed, you can perform some massage movements so that you're really getting the product into the skin. So you'll do some petrissage and then arch movements. Making sure you've always got one hand touching the skin at all times. If you don't have one hand touching the skin when you're working on it, when it does make contact with the skin again, it might make the client jump. So always make sure you've got one hand touching the skin. Hands a bit wet, just wipe them gently on your towel just so that you're not dripping all over your client. until near the end and we'll go straight on to exfoliation. So when we're exfoliating the skin, we're removing the top layer of the dead or dry skin cells and encouraging new skin cell growth. So in effect, because of that method, what it does, you exfoliate, when you use an exfoliator in any treatment, it can be classed as an anti-aging treatment. You can use an exfoliating brush, which looks a little bit like a toothbrush, but it's round, and you would use that in circular motions around the skin with the product or without it. But in this case, we're just going to use a gentle exfoliator, the best skin truth for combination skin. I'm going to distribute that around the same as you did with your cleanser. And you can do soft circular motions so that the little beads just pick up any dead or dry skin cells. This is a gel exfoliator. You can get cream based exfoliators, you can get sugar scrubs. But just be careful because exfoliators for the body, you may not be able to use them for the face. I'm 
Whenever you leave, they always apply a bit of pressure at the temples. And the exercise on your hands, just work on your towel, that's on your left. And then again, use sponges to remove that product. If you wanted, you can take the exfoliator onto the chest and the shoulders if necessary. Um, if your client might, might have dry skin or peeling skin, you might come back off all day and have peeling skin, you can extend it to suit their needs. You'd apply it the same way and remove it in the same way. So we exfoliate at this point because our next step is going to be our facial massage. We're going to use a massage cream or an oil. You wouldn't use an oil on a client with oily skin because that's just adding oil to oil, which we, we're not, uh, which we don't do. You would use a cream for oily skin, but you could use an oil for combination, and it would be ideal to use an oil for a dry skin type to do your massage. So we're exfoliating now to get rid of those dead dry skin cells so that our massage medium can go deeper into the skin and nothing's blocking it, a bit like when you exfoliate for a false time. Okay, back in the bowl. So we've got our massage medium out before, which is our massage cream. So I'm just going to put a tissue that's covering it in the bin. And with the spatula, I'm just going to put a little bit in the hands. And again, one in the hands. Now this is quite thick but it does thin out when it gets warmer and we're going to apply this onto the face and then onto the decolletage and the shoulder areas as well. Distributing now using my collage movements to the areas I'm going to work over. When you've distributed your massage cream, you then need to switch on your steamer to warm up. Because the next step will be to apply the steam. You know, just there, it's the bottom bit, it just needs to tighten up if you did towards last time. Thank you. 